Well, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. And if you will join me as we open in our prayer. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made, from the dust of the earth you have formed us, and from the dust of death you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you will, I want to invite you to stand and let us worship together in song as we sing, Lead Me to the Cross. You may be seated. I want to invite you to listen now to the words that are found in Joel chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 1 through 2, 1 and 2, and then 12 through 17. 
Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God?
Our gospel reading comes from Matthew's gospel, the sixth chapter, and I'll be reading verses one through six. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And if you will join me in our response to the word, the word shall be on the screen in front of you. Teach us wisdom in the secret places of our hearts, O God. Speak truth to our spirits that we may honestly face the sins that separate us from the abundant love you offer us each day. Hear our prayers that we may return to you and be restored to the joy of your forgiveness and grace. Lord, I thank you that your love is deep. It's wide as well. But Lord, we desire to be caught up in that current of your loving grace that surrounds us in so many different ways. I just ask that your Holy Spirit would come and move amongst us in this evening as we gather in your name. Amen. 
I want to have you hear a prayer. So I want you to, I want, and it sounds like I'm giving you orders. I don't know. I want to give you orders, but I want to invite you to bow your head and to listen to this prayer. I'm not sure where it came from. Um, I'm going to read it to you twice. Once, so you just listen to it, and then you can decide if you fit into this prayer. Lord, I confess to you my pride, impatience, self-indulgence, resentment. I can give in to prejudice contempt, pornography, cruelty, cheating, anger, and dishonesty. I confess my envy of those more fortunate, lust for worldly goods and comforts, negligence in prayer and worship, and my failure to stand firm to be a witness to your reality. Let me share that again. And if you need to insert something in that, or if you need to underscore one of those, I invite you to listen. Lord, I confess to you my pride, impatience, self-indulgence, and resentment. I can give in to prejudice, contempt, pornography, cruelty, cheating, anger, and dishonesty. I confess my envy of those more fortunate lust for worldly goods and comforts, negligence in prayer and worship, and my failure to stand firm and be a witness to your reality. Amen. So that's really heavy, isn't it? <laughs> um, I think Lent is supposed to be heavy. It's supposed to have some weight to it. Not Sundays. The Sundays between now and Easter are always celebrations of the resurrection. But the 40 days between now and Easter are days in which we are asked to, or invited to, allowed to um, take on some of these questions that might arise within us. I have to tell you that Ash Wednesday today snuck up on me this year. I don't know about you. I was concerned that nobody would show up this evening. I mean, we didn't even announce it on Sunday. We had a couple other things going on on Sunday. It was awesome, y'all. Um, but Lent, I think, is intended so that Easter doesn't sneak up on us. We live in a culture in which a lot of people don't go to church anymore, don't even go on Easter. And we don't have advertisements from Sears or Jordan Marsh or Burdines or Robinsons. Does anybody remember Robinsons in St. Petersburg? Okay. I'm sorry, those don't exist anymore. There's only one store in the United States anymore. Amazon doesn't, and I, I shouldn't have said that, doesn't announce or doesn't advertise the frilly dresses and the nice hats and the suits, you know, to wear for Easter Sunday morning. And so we don't have any reminders of Easter that just happened naturally in our culture anymore, except maybe white sales, linen sales um, come Easter, but you read those in the paper and it's the day of and you've missed church. So Lent serves a purpose for us that we are reminded that Easter is coming. And so in that sense, Lent is not all about doom and gloom. It's not all about repentance and introspection. Quite to the contrary, I think that Easter is, or, or that Lent is about exalting Easter. It's meant for us to be prepared to be truly glad Easter Sunday morning. Not surprised, but grateful. And I think that Lent invites us to ask the question, What's keeping me, or what might keep me from celebrating Easter? Is it sin? Any of those things that that prayer mentioned, or maybe something that you needed to insert in there? Might it be pain that keeps us from celebrating Easter? Physical pain can get in the way of that celebration. Um, emotional pain, like grief, can get in the way. Hurt and rejection from friends and loved ones can get in the way. 
Maybe it's doubt that gets in the way. Big questions can, can cloud the joy of new and invigorating life that, that is promised to us in the resurrection. So I think that Lent is a time for us to examine all of that, not to wallow in it. <laughs> um, if you wallow in sin, you lose freedom. If you wallow in pain, you get bitter. If you wallow in doubt, you end up in despair. And so, so I think Lent is meant to have some kind of rhythm to it, some kind of rhythm that, that allows us to go into introspection, but allows us to come out. If you, you spend too much time navel gazing, you end up with a backache. You need to come up, you need to breathe. I think every day needs to start with praise, and I think every day needs to end with praise. But Lent offers us the invitation during these 40 days to spend a little time every day to tackle some aspect of whatever it is that might impede our joy coming in Easter. I think that's why people give up things fast um, during Lent. Um, you know, if you, you, you take time that you otherwise would have spent on X, eating something or doing something, whatever, that you've given up, you can go there. You, 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 you can take on those questions and just give some space to, to thinking about sin or pain or doubt. But don't stay there. God is good. And, and we can't just, yeah, end up there. And to help us um, with these things, I wanna offer you three, three different things. Um, the first one is something that's gonna come Sunday. Um, in, in your bulletin, there's going to be a folded piece of paper. And it's not gonna make much sense, and I'll, I'll speak to this on Sunday. But it's the beginning of an origami sheet. And what it is, is, or what it's intended to be, is to become a dove. And that dove, we want to place up here. Have you seen the, the doves up here? The idea, they tell me, I, I never know about these arts people, you know, but they tell me that this is gonna be four or five sections of these doves, and I think they're oriented ultimately to um, the altar. And I, I've decided to call it a wave of hallelujahs to just think of, 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 of this joyous kind of flock coming towards the altar. But at the beginning of Lent, we want to offer you the opportunity on those sheets of paper to write a prayer of some sort. Now, if you're going to mention to God your sin, make it cryptic. We don't want to read all of your sins and uh, know all the juicy details. Um, just, just express in some way on that piece of paper um, what it is, and we're gonna put it up there. But I hope that throughout the time of Lent, because we're going to offer these, um, the opportunity to do this every Sunday throughout Lent, that as Easter is coming, that our prayers change. That our prayers, ch prayers change from just petitions and penitence to praise. And we're looking forward to the completion of, of all of this. And again, I'll, I'll repeat this on Sunday, but I think this is part of, um, part of our Lenten celebration and, and um, process, I guess. Um, the, the second thing that I want to offer to you is a stone. We have, in the last couple of years, used nails and have invited you to carry a nail around during Lent as a reminder of the sin and that our sins um, nailed Jesus on the cross. But um, I think stones are, are good reminders as well and good preparations for us for Easter. The Bible talks about stones in different ways. It talks about the stone that was rejected became the cornerstone. Um, it talks about stones being thrown at a woman caught in adultery. Stephen, Paul, different ones were stoned. 
Um, a stone covered the tomb and was rolled away. Um, Jesus said that the stones would cry out if others didn't about who he was. Um, I personally, even though I work in the church and I'm around here a lot, I forget that it's Lent during the day. You know, you just get wrapped up in this, that, and the other. But if you're carrying a stone around, when, when you're pulling your keys out, or if you're getting your keys in your purse, whatever it happens to be, and you, you feel a stone, it reminds us of the season that we're in. I tend to be a pretty forgetful person. I forget to take the pills that are helping cure my disease, you know, but any kind of reminder is helpful. Um, and so, um, I, I, I guess what I, what I want to say is that when, when you come up um, to receive the imposition of ashes, which is the third thing I want to offer, I want to invite you to grab one of these um, and to carry it with you. And if you lose it, don't feel guilty. Just get another one. Um, come, come the next Sunday or, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. But the third thing is indeed wearing a cross on your forehead as you leave. Um, I have, I, I, I think it's, it's logical to think of the, the ashes, wearing the ashes as a, as a humbling thing, not as something exalting. We will say to you that from ashes you've come to ashes you return. That can sound pretty depressing. Uh, and, and I think it's appropriate that we, that we think about um, death because death is connected in the Bible with sin. And one brought the other. And so we, we, we need to incorporate those together. But um, I don't know. If I tell you that you have come from dust and you're going, you will return to dust. The idea that God was just playing with some dust and added some moisture to it and out came you, that's pretty amazing. The idea that we have come from dust and that we end up as these remarkable human beings is a really cool idea and is something worth celebrating, I think. I think that, that, that God celebrates who we are and, and, and the remarkableness of who we are. Um, we're, we're, remarkable, we're remarkable biologically. You know, just that from, from some dust and, and moisture and then whew, God breathes um, his likeness into us that out of dust, here we are, that's remarkable. But I want to suggest that each one of you are remarkable people. I actually like you. Well, let me make sure I like each one of you. I <laughs> make sure who's here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, more importantly, God enjoys you. God wants you to spend time with him, delights in hearing what is going on in your life and you sharing that. That is remarkable. I think that that speaks to what some call the dash of life. You know, the dash of life is, is, is on, a, on, a, on a cemetery marker. There's a, a date of when you were born, and then there's a date of when you died, and there's a dash in between. And life is found in that dash, and I'm not sure that the length of the dash matters. It's how fat it is. You know, how full our life was and is. And I think that Lent is an invitation for us to let go of things that would impede our lives being truly full. And so Lent is a great opportunity to let go of things that hinder us from joy, that hinder us from receiving the good news of the resurrection, that would keep us from the salvation that God has for me. Let's shed our sin and our pain and our doubt. Let us pray.
Lord, your people have gathered this evening. And we recognize that we are starting a different season in the church year. And we are thankful for it. I thank you that we have this reminder that from dust we have come, that what the dash is in between is miraculous and remarkable, and that to dust we return. Lord, help us to embrace the humbling part of that. But Lord, allow us the freedom to celebrate who we are in you and the hope that we find in the death and resurrection of your son. Lord, bless this time that we come um, remembering you and your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. Because Lord, we, we come here this evening remembering that on, on the night in which you were betrayed, you broke bread, you offered it to your disciples, not, not so much as just kind of food at a restaurant, but in a Seder supper ceremony. And yet you interrupted that ceremony and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Eat as often as you would in remembrance of me. And so we come tonight doing that, starting Lent in this way. And likewise, we remember that in that Seder supper, at the end of the meal, the actual eating part, there was more ceremony. There were more prepared words. But Jesus said, this is my blood which is shed for you. Drink as often as you would in remembrance of me. You transformed that into something that your disciples then didn't know what in the world you were talking about. But we on this side of the cross do. And so we come remembering you and, and, and celebrating what you have done. And Lord, asking that you would touch us as we receive these elements. We give you thanks for this privilege. In Jesus' name. Amen. So before we have this prayer of thanksgiving over the ashes, um, I want to just speak to some instructions here. There are one, two, three, four things that I want to invite you to participate in. One is that you follow the direction of the ushers and you come down and you receive the imposition of ashes on your forehead from Travis or I you know, just depending on which side you're going. Then I invite you to take a stone and ascribe to it whatever you need for the stone to remind you of throughout these 40 days. And just kneel and offer that to the Lord. And when you're done with that conversation, then at the end of um, both sides here, um, we will have communion elements ready for you. Um, to receive by intinction. So you will take a piece of bread, you will dunk it into the cup, and then um, if you would just go and sit again. So we're just gonna follow this kind of general sequence. Um, if you would like um, gluten-free bread, I think we have that as well. Just let one of us um, know about that and we would be happy to share that with you. Um, so anyway, Travis, would you please come and join me up here and those youth who are going to help with communion, if you would come forward.
If the ushers would come forward and to help us, I want to invite, invite you to come. All is ready.
we're gonna, Robert, we're glad you, we got you, man. <laughs> I'm glad you came all the way up here. Thank you. We're gonna sing a, a contemplative, it's just a beautiful um, hymn. It's what wondrous love is this. Would you please stand with me as we, we close our time this evening? As you go forth in the world, share your love quietly and abundantly that God may bless others with the gifts of your love and your grace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you.